Good morning. You're listening to Central Wisconsin's 24-hour information station, WFHR. It's time now for the Morning Magazine. Welcome, everyone, to Morning Magazine for this July 20th, 2022, 10.06 on the clock. And you have your host, James J. Mayloff, here. At 10.30, we're going to welcome in Eric Brittenacher from the Performing Arts Center, Megan Shields, and Lao Zhang from Kids from Wisconsin. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Right now, in the studio with us, Wisconsin Rapids Mayor Shane Blazer. Good morning, Shane. Good morning, James. Good to have you with us, sir. Yeah, and we uh, want to send a shout-out to Taylor and our friends at uh, Wisconsin Rapids Community Media. Thank you for being here, gang. Appreciate you guys being here. Good to see you. Uh, Mayor, how have you been? I'm great. Good. I'm good great. to hear. How about you? Very good. Uh, doing good. Thanks yeah. for asking. Um, it's summer, so it is uh, a handful of things we know. Uh, it is orange cone season mm-hmm. and uh, garage and rummage sales and those sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, we just got done having a hosting our all-star game in town. Mm-hmm. It's been a busy summer. Uh, how has it been going from uh, City Hall? Yeah, things are, uh, you know, I keep describing it it's like planning for a wedding. You know, you, you do all this planning and prep in the off season, and hopefully everything goes off without a hitch. And, yeah. and things have been going very well. You know, our construction crew has been mo- moving along. Um, they're, they're a rock star team out there, and they keep driving through and pushing through on all the projects that we have set up. And, you know, with everybody else at the street department and engineering department, it was a lot of coordination. and. They always seem to hit it out of the park. I had uh, another spot to start at, but since we're on the subject, I uh, I, I kind of was uh, doing a little my own kind of poll uh, over the last couple of weeks with people, knowing that we were going to be talking mm-hmm. soon, and just asking people, hey, be honest with me, how's the construction been? You know, how's things going and all this, and uh, just between us and that kind of thing, nothing. Got no negative feedback. I don't remember the last time in my lifetime that I have not heard people complaining about construction or, or, or mm-hmm. orange cone season or something, especially where I come from in Chicago, where it is just constant. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's January. It seems like there's some construction going on or, or something. Or all night long, too. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I haven't gotten that feedback. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I just have not heard a lot of that. Um, a big shout-out to the workers out there. They are getting this job done and done on an efficiency, like a very efficient rate. Yeah, they are doing a really good job. And, you know, right now our probably our biggest mess is down at Jackson Street. You know, the, mm-hmm. we lost one of the use of one of the bridges, so everything's compacted on the Grand Avenue. and. Definitely been an increased amount of traffic there, but everything seems to be going right along. And and I know that uh, different, de- uh, you know, it's a department and it's running itself and those things and everything. But I, I, I am curious, like that doesn't just happen. Like, hey, it worked out, guys. You know, I mean, no, it, it takes planning. It takes uh, people doing being very good at what they're doing. Uh, the logistics behind the scenes, that must have been that must be something that they really planned out, worked through. Really, I mean, to a to a real degree, to a, a solid point. Yeah, especially um, Jackson Street is a state project that we we sign up. It's an eighty twenty project. We pick up twenty percent of the cost. The state does the other eighty, but they do the design. And and there's a lot of meetings, coordination between our street department, street superintendent, and our engineering department, and you know all the utility services, water and light. They're all meeting throughout kind of planning and prepping and uh, working with the subcontractors and yeah it's quite a coordinated effort that uh, they seem to be able to pull it all together and and now they're doing curbing on there so it's coming right along. With things uh, being on time uh, which again just feels so weird to say about construction. Um, Weather we, helps. Yeah, yeah. That, that mm-hmm. certainly. And a thank mm-hmm. you to Mother Nature, who yeah. maybe uh, one of the people we should be mentioning with all exactly. this too. Uh, does that um, does that affect the schedule at all? Does that mean that projects that maybe you were thinking about next year doing, maybe you can look at this year, this summer, or uh, affect the budget? Yeah. So there's always usually a, some contingency in all the projects. So there's hopefully at the goal, if everything goes well, there's money left over, and then then there's a couple of odd projects they can pick up, whether it be, you know, those, um, paving alleys or working on some parking lots, and they they do find some extra work should there be some time available. Hmm. Um, I noticed that recently you uh, took some time at our friends over at the ODC, uh, and a big shout out and good morning to all of them. Love our friends over there. Uh, how did that go? Yeah, that was a great event. You know, we we have the opportunity for hope. It's a mental health clinic here, and uh, the services that they'll both provide are going to be an excellent resource in the community. They also are going to have a satellite over in uh, Stevens Point, and so they'll be providing services there with their home base here and. Senator Teston was there yesterday, and it was it was a very good event. Yeah, um, it, it, we we're really fortunate in this area. We've got some amazing, amazing uh, 
nonprofits and and people behind them that help run them and the ODC way right, way up there at the top of that list with the important vital work that they do and especially when you consider um, these the people that are working over there or the people that are over there or the clientele that they have are then going and their biggest success is to be able to work in the community mm -hmm. so they're literally putting into the community literally adding to the community by doing the oh, work absolutely. that they do over there it's it's vital it's important mm -hmm. and and the fact that they're expanding that they're adding this new facility, this new ability there. It's it's not only speaks to the need for that uh, and and them addressing that, which they've been very good about, but also that uh, you're not able, nothing expands if it isn't doing well initially. So the fact that they are able to expand speaks to the great, amazing work that they do over there and the way this community supports that because they can't do it alone. Businesses working with them to hire these people and all that. It's a, a team effort. Yeah, a lot of the services, you know, they, they are going to be providing services in area schools, so they're, they're just not providing services for clients at ODC. Good point. Um, it is a community service that's being provided, and yeah, they had a lot of donations that came together and a, a lot of support, and Altman Construction, I, I did a tour through there, did a great job. It's, it's a really a nice facility, and it'll be a great place for people to come and get uh, assistance that, and, and, you know, some of those services. Uh, one of the things recently I saw uh, you post about uh, that the city is offering an opportunity to provide feedback on the future of the paper mill site in connected areas. Mm -hmm. I'm going to touch on that a little bit. Yeah, so we, we've had a couple of, of like community events where uh, Vandewall and Associates, they did a presentation and they did, did some ex exercises and activities. And this is another opportunity that for people that didn't provide or, or come to any of those events, that they can provide some input into this process. And so yeah, there's QR codes and uh, opportunities to be able to go out and take a survey and provide some input. Um, and and that, um, that input is vital. It is. Um, it's, it, it, I know that, uh, I think especially in this day and age when there's like every five seconds somebody sending you a survey or exactly. something, uh, we get a little, it, it just kind of uh, out of sight, out of mind and a little right. blind to it. That information is important. Uh, and, and, and for anybody out there that does like to bark or complain about things, this is your chance to actually do something with that barking. Uh, you know, you don't do yourself any good sitting on the couch and just barking to your significant other or whatever. Like, this is a chance to actually do something and have your input had, add to our community. So, um, this is one of those things that when we look back 10, 20 years from now, people are going to be wondering how we handled this situation. Yeah, and... It, and with the mill, you know, we all hope that it's going to start and yeah. uh, they'll produce yeah. paper or a product there. But should that not happen, you know, and this is one of those plans that this could be a possibly a use for the site, but it's a plan that we hope we put on the shelf and never need. You know, yeah. government's good at doing plans and surveying and, and they don't like the results and they put it on the shelf. And this is one that we hope they just put on the shelf and, and not need. But um, you have insurance, hoping to never use it. Correct. Yeah, you know? correct. Yeah. And that's what it is. Yeah, uh, but I, I will say that this has been my biggest calling card since this whole thing happened. Is wondering, well, what is our plan B? Right. Um, if plan A doesn't work, what are we going to do here? Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it, we're at this point where you know it has to be discussed, and, and that's mm -hmm. good uh, that we're discussing it. And I really appreciate and respect the idea of bringing it to the community, putting the survey out there. That's not something you have to do. I appreciate that you you do do that that kind of thing. I always appreciate somebody who's in a position like yours and realizes I don't have all the answers. Oh, I don't have any of the answers. We need more of that in this day and age. We need more people that like in that in positions like yourself to be able to do that. Uh, I, I admire that. Uh, I think it goes a long way with the community. You know, need to rely on people and, and listen to input and then try to formulate the best decision that you can and yeah nobody knows all the answers or, yeah. or they shouldn't claim to so and we see that but yeah you know hopefully we'll Hopefully the mill will start and, uh, yeah. you know, there'll be some opportunities there. But otherwise, it is a very nice piece of real estate, and there's a lot of things that could be done there. And whoever ends up owning that site, you know, hopefully we'll have a plan that we can kind of work with them on that. There's, uh, there's a lot of opportunity there, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, whether it is another paper mill or, or what have you, um, there is something that can be done with the land mm -hmm. of that area. And uh, if there's one thing I, I know about this community, a lot more creative than I think they realize. Uh, there's a lot of great imagination out there, a lot Absolutely. of creativity and different ideas. So I always say we have, a, we have a lot of smart people in our community and creative people that we can figure out solutions to our problems mm -hmm. right here.
Yeah. Uh, if people want to find that survey, uh, just go to uh, wirapids.org. Can you find it at the city's website? Correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. And again, that website is wirapids.org. I uh, wanted to touch on the uh, budget and how that's going, the city budget. So, yeah, it's, uh, we, we had a committee the whole meeting here since our last discussion. And, you know, the, it, it was a great discussion. If you have an opportunity, go out to uh, um, community media and mm-hmm. watch the replay mm-hmm. of that. I think it was one of the better discussions at, at a common council level. Um, there wasn't a lot of specific guidance other than at this point is you know department heads need to put together a responsible and reasonable budget mm-hmm. and then we'll go from there and see what that looks like yeah and, and so there's there's some stuff that's got to clear uh you know clear before we can really dive into yeah, it and everything um but uh it, as an overall looking at the things mm-hmm. uh are we are things going pretty well there with it yeah, as far I, as that goes i think so you know our, our finance director he, he's got a tough job you know he's doing a lot yeah. of forecasting and guessing and you know trying to guess what what state aids are going to be in the fall and so it's a lot of work that he has to go through a lot of calculations way beyond my scope of knowledge and uh so yeah he's working through that and putting together that so once now once the department heads submit their final kind of budget then that will be incorporated more we we have a rough idea out there right now a couple months ago but now it's time to get down to the details and then then it's really going to come down to determining priorities and how we're going to go forward from that point one of the interesting things to me since i was a little kid about politics is this idea of once a new person is elected we just like expect a blank slate and everything mm-hmm. starts over or something like that when that's not how this works obviously every person that no matter from the you know rapids of mayor rapids mayor mm-hmm. to the president of the united states everybody's taking over a previous regime absolutely and it's not making excuses it's facts it's mm-hmm. it's pointing to hey this is what i i have to handle this that was the previous the good the bad whatever came Absolutely. from the previous mm-hmm. so when it comes to bringing up that word budget uh it, it has a bit of a heavier tone i think in town here because i think that's part of the reason why you were elected so it, it is encouraging to hear that you know and, and to that point is and we had a discussion last night at a common council meeting uh, on rooftop units at the centralia mm-hmm. center for heating and cooling there's there's 12 of them up there they need to be replaced six of them are are on on the table now to be mm-hmm. replaced for a tune of about a half a million dollars. Huh. We have about two hundred thirty-five thousand dollars in a savings account, a depreciation account mm-hmm. for replacements over there. There was a lot more, but previous administrations and councils decided to spend a lot of money to redo the parking lot. Mm-hmm. You know, and so it's really about trying to prioritize those projects. And so now we're going to have to take a little bit out of savings because. Th- these units are over 20 years old and yeah. need to be replaced. Mm-hmm. But it's really, like you said, you inherit a previous uh, administration or previous council's decisions, and now you have to make decisions going on forward. You know, council gets a little upset that we're not, not better planned for it, but how much do you take out of tax dollars or charge us taxes mm-hmm. to put in the savings accounts? Yeah. And, you know, so now we're, we're collecting taxes that maybe necessarily we don't need right now, but we're using for the future. and trying to find that balance and then you like you said you know we previous administrations and councils chose to do a parking lot Mm. where i at this point you know heating and air conditioning units would probably be a little more higher priority uh, and then a parking lot Mm -hmm. but the parking lot looks really nice but it's all about priorities at the time and well here we are and dealing with that on a local level, while on a on a national level, you've got social security issues and these mm-hmm. things. So that's on people's minds mm-hmm. as well. Then when you take it to this level, that ad just adds on top of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it is uh, th- there are some silver linings about all this too. I do believe where we're able to. Um, you know, some of the things that were done previously, uh, whether we like them or not, whether yep. we wanted them or not, they're here to stay, and we're making the most out of them. Yeah, you know, and. and like a council person brought up last night about preparing for future costs at the aquatic center and pump replacements and you know but that's all dollars that we have to carve out now for later and and how do you do that while you're still trying to budget activities for now Um, you know we do that with a replacement of equipment and we've got a pretty good system set up where you know if we need at, at that point where the backhoe is time to be replaced there's money there to replace it but it's hard to do that for every single account, every single air conditioning unit, because how much money of your current budget 
are you going to divert to those individual savings accounts mm. while, still, while still trying to provide services? Yeah. It's, it's complicated. Darn near every city has something, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and just about every city is looking to bring more people, more visitors mm -hmm. to its area, more in that kind of. Um, we're pretty fortunate for a rural community to have a couple of attractions. Oh, yeah. uh, we just got done hosting an all-star game. Mm -hmm. I don't know the numbers, but I guarantee it helped our city's economy. You yeah. know, uh, the rafters in general, the River Kings in general, having these things, um, all that. Our local teams doing well, you know, Assumption Royal girls go to state, oh, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. All this stuff adds to the pot mm -hmm. um, and goes into free parking, <laughs> kind <laughs> of, if, if I'm looking at this as a real mature adult as a Monopoly board. That's a real great way to look at it. Um, but it, it does add up to that oh, yeah. and, and all these things while it may cost like you said with the water park paying for you know pump going bad or something we have to balance that and say hey are we making more than we're losing from it and overall mm -hmm. it, these things are, are tending to do that but it's gonna mm -hmm. you know nothing wor worth having comes easy so um, and their quality of life you know there are things that we need in our community because we want to go do it we just ended uh legion had a a regional tournament here yeah, at the quad plexus yeah. last weekend you know we got red hawks baseball going mm -hmm. on there and um shout out to them too absolutely yeah, yeah. 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 We don't what, get what a great opportunity yeah. and yeah try to go check out a red hawks game yes a lot of their um entry fees they use to for a donation so mm -hmm. they every game they have a, a have a cause that they're supporting and yeah it's a great opportunity to see another level and a different level of baseball yeah. and yeah, they're having a really good season for their inaugural season. And, yeah, it's something that I highly support that the community go and check out. There's a couple of things that have always stood out to me about Rapids people. Uh, they, they love their high school teams. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever high school you graduated from, that is your team. And you like them like you do your Packers and Badgers and everything. Absolutely. And we love baseball around here. Like, hey, we can support baseball. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> I don't know many rural communities that have, uh, like, two baseball teams in their town mm -hmm. or are able to support them and everything. That's yeah, pretty impressive. You know, there's, there's, yeah, all the way all the way through from Legion to, uh, Red, to Raptors, Red Hawks and there's a lot of baseball opportunity here. High school teams mm -hmm. that get supported and everything. Yeah. Um, and as we, we, we've touched on this in the past, uh, one thing, that, again, that almost all, all cities have in common is always looking to not only keep the people that they have in city, but to bring new people in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as Rapids uh, continues to, you know, flux a little bit with the growth of uh, people, and other cities do, of course, um, we, we do have to think about parking. We have to think about transportation, those things. So transportation certainly coming up in council meetings what is being discussed with that as far as overall just the under the umbrella of transportation so it's about you know trying to yeah, downtown parking is always an issue you know? yeah. and so you know how many downtowns have parking and i think we're used to having closed parking and so there's always trying to balance trying to figure out that and uh you know making sure our roads and our road quality are really good and, and that's something our engineering department our city council and public works committee spend a lot of time wrestling to make sure there's good balance and a good investment in that and that we're trying to stay at least not losing ground but we're trying to maintain and it's it's continuous uh, is there uh, been further talk about a, a possible transit system, a, a bus, a train line, something like that? Uh, so there hasn't been any discussions on that. In the past, I've been a part of and I've seen discussions about trying to create a transit system between here, Point, and Marshfield. Mm -hmm. uh, at least some busing opportunities, but... You know, a lot of times the funding comes through transportation uh, um, grants, and there just haven't been a lot of opportunities. And sometimes they pop up, and sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. And but yeah, there's been that discussion. But internally, it's you know, it's our cab, and not too many Ubers around here. And, yeah. And so yeah, it's just trying to manage that. Um, and that's one of those things that kind of, um, especially with the modern way of things, you just mentioned Uber, things mm -hmm. like that. Sometimes cities work themselves, the work that out themselves. Right. You know, the people right. do with, uh, you know, more Uber drivers or There's or that opportunities kind of thing. there, you know, yeah. if you want to do a business idea and... You know, the, the, I know a lot of people that like to do uh, DoorDash and, you know, those yeah. financial opportunities they can make there. But, yeah, you know, not too many Ubers yet, but there are a few, I think, and it's an area to grow. Yeah. Speaking of parking, um, has there been any other discussion or any discussion at all uh, about uh, the, the day parking? The uh, this day you can park on the road, this oh. day you can't, that kind of thing? Yeah, there's an ongoing, I think, a referral to discuss it because it, it seems to be a continuous it seems like every now. once in a while it pops mm -hmm. back up. Yep. Yeah, and yeah, I'm always in favor of uh, 
open parking and I'm not a big fan of the alternate side parking because there's there's plenty of places in this community where there's no parking on one side of the road so if I have no parking across the street from me and I have parking in front of me well I can only alternate I can't alternate park so then mm -hmm. I have to go to a, a different street near me to park and I don't know I, I just think that you know as long as there isn't littered and junk vehicles which I think can be addressed is we can we can eliminate a parking or overnight parking ordinance. Uh, I, I, I agree with you completely, as we've talked about the po before and everything, but interesting to see how that develops. I did want to uh, touch on this as well. Uh, recently, the Wisconsin State uh, Supreme Court uh, made drop boxes illegal in Wisconsin. Is that how will that or will that uh, affect our, us at all here in this town? So, yeah, so in speaking with our, our city clerk, Jennifer Gossick, they, uh, we did not have drop boxes here. Um, I guess there was a discussion at some point, but she said it. You know, it's not currently legal, and um, so yeah, it, we do not use them. Okay. And, and if you come up to City Hall, you know, you'll see a mailbox out front that clearly states, you know, it's for tax payments and not for ballots. You know, the, those need to be hand-delivered, mm -hmm. and they need to be given. And it also is important that I cannot deliver my spouse's. I can only deliver my own ballot by, in person. By mail, it doesn't matter, but it's something to really remember for uh, somebody coming in to drop off an absentee ballot. They can't bring in their spouses. They need to come together, and, and that's very important because... Yeah, you, you bring in two ballots. It, it's not going to. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's going to be interesting as we go forward here with this, uh, how people with disabilities and and that are able to vote, and how we figure those things out, uh, and and it's so important that we get this right. Mm -hmm. um, we cannot afford to be spending another two years complaining about an election that happened two years ago. Yeah. We uh, we need to get this right, and if anything else, um, regardless of any debates or any feelings you have out there, the people. That that are running these polls, the people that are working at these places, are, are not billionaires. These aren't people that are making tons of money. They're volunteers 99% of the time. Uh, you got frustrations. Don't take it out on them. No, they're our neighbors, you know. And, they're our people. They're, and, they're our family members half the time. They're city yeah, citizens. They're, they're, that's the grassroots of elections. You know, it's the people that run the elections under the guidance of the clerk, but these are not employees of of the government mm. um, they, they do get nominal wages but they spend a long day there trying to make sure that we have an open honest election and I, I know from a previous clerk that you know our, our poll workers here strive for that mm -hmm. and I don't I've never felt that there was any misconduct being done or anything inappropriate but they are just normally uh, older citizens that uh, want to take part in this process and but yeah, if anybody wants to take off the day of work to become a poll worker, uh, the clerk would be more than happy to talk to them. It's a great point to mention. And we do have people. We have people in this community that will take a vacation day yeah. from their job to work at a polling place. It's impressive. Which is incredible. Yeah, it really incredible. is. Yeah. Uh, it really is. And we appreciate them doing Absolutely. that so much. Yeah. Um, Mayor, uh, you got any summer plans? You got some fun stuff coming up this summer, hopefully? No, uh, we're just, uh, I've been full-fledged baseball tournaments with my son and right his on. team. And uh, it's a great group of families. And uh, it's been uh, enjoyable. But we have a few weeks left. And then, yeah. you know, I still want to see right. some Red Hawks baseball. Right and, uh, right you know, kind of enjoy some of those things. Good to hear. Good to hear. Thank you so much for the time. If people have follow-up questions, want to know more about some of the things we've talked about, you can certainly go to wirapids.org. That's the city's website. Otherwise, if they want to reach you, Shane, how can they do that? 715-421-8202 is my truck line. Encourage you to also uh, go to YouTube and uh, type into there Wisconsin Rapids Community Media. Like and subscribe to their page. Keep up to date on the great work that Taylor and everybody is doing over there. We appreciate you. Uh, and thanks a lot for being here today. We will uh, talk with Mayor Blazer again next month. You have a good one, sir. You also. And we'll be back with more Morning Magazine coming up right here on WFHR, locally grown radio.